direction. And to get another um, statistic and information packed presentation. Um, as we've been saying before, there's plenty of information on our website. Also, if you want to um, have some information about some of the health impacts, I believe Claire is somewhere and she has some further information that she can either provide to you now or once again through the contact um, sheets we're passing around, we can pass on further information. Um, so, you've heard a little bit about what we've done, a little bit about the effects of the pollutants in the atmosphere, a little bit about the actual effect of um, increased traffic and even counterintuitively having a slip tunnel is like to attract even more traffic. And so now we will talk a bit about the campaigning aspect and how we can start to move things forward for ourselves. Um, I'd like to introduce Sean Berry. Sean's a sustainable transport campaign, a campaign for better transport, and has been running the campaign Roads to Nowhere. She was also the Green um, candidate for Mayor uh, previously, and has been successful in uh, contributing to defeating the previous Thames Gateway project. Um, so, yeah, over to you, Thank you. Hi, uh, well, thanks for having me. Um, as introduced, I'm, I'm a campaigner. Um, and I work for a group called the Unpaid Best Transport. We were called Transport 2000 when we were made <coughs> in uh, campaigning in this area before. Um, my job is basically to look after people who are uh, local campaigners who want to try and stop new roads being built in their areas. Um, and I also work on other roads campaigns around the country. Um, and just to sort of talk a little bit more about what Simon and Ian were talking about. Um, Simon talked about um, there being powerful laws um, against uh, breaches of air quality uh, limits. And there, there really, really are. Um, we know that at a national level, the government is getting very, very worried about some of its road building plans uh, being challenged by people who have found places that are <coughs> below the limits, that are going to be pushed over the limits by new road building plans. Um, so most of this morning, talking to um, local radio and TV and papers in the east of England because the A14 scheme that's aiming to put a giant new road between Cambridge and Huntingdon uh, will deliver traffic directly into two air quality management areas um, that are hovering on the, on the border. Um, nothing like the figures you already have here in London. Um, but the Government and Highways Agency are really worried <coughs> about the challenge that we're putting up to that road because of these very, very strong laws on air quality. So I think the things we've seen here today, the awful air quality that you already live in, the fact that this road will put loads more traffic into your area, just, just dump it straight into this existing soup of air, air pollution, is a real strong, strong aspect of what you can campaign on. So, just to say that. Um, I'm, I'm here partly because... Um, no, I should not put it, I should put it in the shoe. No? Okay. I'm here partly because um, my organisation, and when it was called Transport 2000, was involved in the campaign against the Thames Gateway Bridge. Um, this was proposed for the Gallion's Reach sites, um, well, John said, since the Dark Ages. <laughs> <laughs> but last time, this was um, in the sort of early 2000s, mid 2000s, uh, I've been going through our files in the office this week. Uh, I've got documents going back to about 2002 on our computers, and presumably we had some before we had computers as well. Um, so this is the last incarnation of, of that bridge. Um, and what's unique about that is um, a number of things, but mainly that when it came up to go through the planning system, there was a public inquiry, and campaigners um, were... Oh, I'll go to the next slide. Oh, wait, go to this slide. Um, the campaigners were given a gift um, by the promoters of the scheme, the Mayor of London, uh, Ken Livingston, uh, not out of the goodness of his heart, um, it was because there were Green Assembly members there on the London Assembly who had a casting vote over his budget, and they said, well, you're going to put, he wasn't going to give up on putting the Town to Gateway Bridge into his uh, future budget, and they basically said, well, okay, if you're going to do that, can we have uh, tens of thousands of pounds, please, um, to put towards the people jetting to the road so that they can get expert help. Um, and that's absolutely decisive. Um, at the end of it, the, well, I heard from Jenny Bates here, from Friends of the Earth, who was involved in that um, earlier on, that the, the barristers and QCs on the other <coughs> side, the barristers working for TFL, were actually very pleased to have um, 
people on the other side who are equally knowledgeable and able to argue. And the inspector um, himself, I'm assuming it was a man, uh, <laughs> said <laughs> that it was helpful to receive the expert, the expert, the evidence, the expert witnesses, um, and that it was, it was novel to see it, that it came from funds from the promoters. Um, so all of those expert witnesses managed to pick the biggest holes ever in the case for the Thamesgate Reverend. Um, so <laughs> just going back to the previous slide, I'm in the wrong order. Um, this is some of the things that were um, about the practice in the Thamesgate Reverend that were actually given in TfL's own documents. 94% um, of the benefits would go to car drivers. Percent of public transport users. This is despite the fact that in the areas that were supposed to be regenerated and help one scheme, um, which is what they were claiming, only a quarter to a third of them were actually car owners. Uh, it would increase traffic across a very wide area, lots of boroughs affected by extra traffic. Traffic would more than double, as, as John's studies <laughs> show, on many roads, uh, key junctions with the next junctions along would just jam up. So we've got the same kind of thing going on. Um, and that's just from terms of TFL's uh, own assessments. Um, the objectors gave evidence uh, for about a year, I think, <laughs> between 2005 and 6, and eventually in 2007 the inspector wrote his report and we got to see what he thought. And um, according to my, uh, my summaries that I've got from the campaigns in my office that were working with this at the time, um, he roundly condemned the scheme. Um, and there's lots of really good quotes in his report. We've produced a, a summary of the, the best bits, um, which is a link to it at the end of my um, thing. But there's some just brilliant um, examples of exactly the things that we've been talking about. Um, the road would cause increased congestion, there would be loads more traffic, um, the, benefits are to, the benefits are not used to relieve the problems you currently have, they encourage people to make longer journeys, uh, there's more trips generated by the um, it would improve safety, it would reduce travel by cycling or walking, um, public transport would be less well used with the scheme than without it. And those are trends that are just completely alien to London in the last 20 years. Um, the Thames Gateway Bridge would have set things backwards, I thought. Uh, oh, use that one. Um, air quality, this is again, it was an important issue then, um, but it's a more important issue now. We have stronger laws with more people campaigning on air quality. Um, but even at the time, he drew this point very to the Secretary of State's attention that air quality would be worse in an area in which air quality has historically been low. Um, he did not regard that as acceptable. Um, and you know, we know more than we do did then now about the effects of air quality and air pollution. So um, again, then it was quite a decisive thing. There were a lot of economic benefits claimed at the time. Um, you always get this, and we're getting it again on the Silver Tower Tunnel. Um, city needs group, and therefore needs more traffic. Um, this was thoroughly examined during the inquiry. Um, it's quite easy, to, it, it's hard to make a case against because quite often they don't give you concrete reasons why the, to back up the case they're making for. Um, but in the end, the inspector didn't consider their evidence to be strong enough or reliable enough to outweigh the, the disbenefit. So um, even on their own terms, uh, even people who strongly believed that new traffic would create growth, it just didn't work out really spectacle. That was not a good reason. So um, basically what happened then, 5,000 people objected to the scheme um, as a result of the various campaigners who were funded um, and who were working long before they were funding in fact to raise awareness and thing. Um, and the, the inspector's report kind of sat on the shelf for a little while, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, and the Secretary of State and TfL uh, wondered what to do about this fact. Um, and eventually the government announced it was going to reopen the inquiry, um, but then the election intervened um, in which I was involved. I was a Green <laughs> candidate. Um, I didn't have to think very hard about this uh, when making my policies. My policy was to cancel the terms of the bridge. Um, and Boris's policy was to cancel the Thames Gateway Bridge as well, uh, thanks to heavy lobbying from campaigners. So when the election um, happened in May 2009, he did cancel it. But before that, whilst they were waiting for the inspector's report, um, campaigners also managed to get funding together to commission set consultants to look at alternatives. Um, and that's well worth a look at, because these are alternatives that mostly 
haven't happened since uh, 2008 and are really good things to promote when you're, being, when you're going through a consultation, promoting alternatives, trying to make sure the Transport for London has looked at those alternatives properly, um, can be really decisive in going through the planning process again. Um, so I'd, I'd highly recommend having a look at it. It did some sort of it did some calculation benefits different things, and it did come up with a cable car. Now those of you who complain about the current cable car, it was looking at the actual location of Galleon's Reach, which was it's a place that arguably could do with, with you know, more crossings and further to get people across, not cars. Um, and that was what was promoted. Um, the one that's there at the moment is possibly not in the right place in the middle of the crash zone and hardly anyone uses it, so don't blame my colleagues and the consultants for that. After that, a whole set of... It, this, he, they compared this to um, a, a large road scheme and second and above the road scheme came all these other um, sustainable transport options. Uh, ferry, a, a bridge for walking, cycling and buses. The picture at the bottom there is of a bridge that's, um, that does this in Vienna, um, crossing about the same amount of river. It started off with a bus only walking and cycling bridge and I think you can see on it just about there, it's actually now a metro line extension that's been put across it. So it's provided really good links to a uh, much, much cheaper <coughs> road bridge because of the weights. Um, they also propose the same thing, a light rail bridge, um, walking and cycling alongside. And <laughs> because it's quite a long way, they also looked at and um, assessed the cost and benefit of a, of a travel list <laughs> across the bridge. So I think we'd, we'd all prefer to have a nice walking, cycling, and travel later bridge across um, uh, a new tunnel or a new bridge at that point. Um, and the third, again, ahead of building anything at all um, was improved transport policies, uh, better public transport in general, and traffic management. So the demand management measures that John talked about earlier, um, park and ride, um, you know, congestion charge, that sort of thing, um, all far better value, far more effective than building new roads. Um, so I think that's, that's something that hopefully gees you up a bit, that this thing can be defeated. Um, it has to go through quite a few more stages of planning. Um, so it's been designated a, this new thing, a nationally significant infrastructure project. Um, so you get a sort of halfway house with that. You don't get a full public inquiry, not necessarily, there won't necessarily be that sort of courtroom long year long thing. Um, the nationally significant infrastructure planning process is supposed to be finished within a, uh, six months of being started. But before it starts, um, the idea is that the promoter has to get out of the way all the consultation and do the consultation really, really properly. And the local councils get to sign off whether the consultation has been done properly. Local people um, get to campaign and raise awareness and, and get their objections in early. Um, you can do quite a lot of back and forth challenging them for their business cases and things beforehand. If they don't do all of that um, and they haven't consulted properly, then uh, the examiners are trade to, to treat that as a thing. I've been through a couple of road things under this new process. It is quite new. Um, the first examination last year was was quite shoddily done and it was taken, it was given approval. It was the Haitian M60 road I think, in Lancashire. Um, and we did take it to the um, High Court to object to the processes that, that went through. And the High Court did rule that it was pretty inadequate the way they'd done it but um, wasn't prepared to go as far as overturning the approval. Um, but some of the comments about how unpopular it was done are very useful. Um, the next one that's going through the same process is um, in George Osborne's constituency in Cheshire. It's called the A556. For that, we've identified exactly the air quality problem, the, the air pollution uh, being slightly below and going slightly above. The own, their own assessment uh, accepts this. It says, you know, we must, we must acknowledge that this, this potential breach is occurring. Um, so we've, we've raised that very strongly with the inspector there, and we can see how we do with that kind of task base. Um, but you have the very strongest case for raising those issues here, I think. Um, and to cheer us all up, um, here's a picture of all the different campaigns. This is more or less the same panel of speakers at a meeting at City Hall a couple of weeks ago. We've got Simon and Ian, John, Jenny, Bates from Friends of the Earth, Dan Johnson, the Green, and Alan and Alan from the City Airport campaign. Um, we've got the Network of Clean Air, 
Friends of the Earth, fantastic experience um, with exactly things in this area that also have experts on hand. Um, there's campaign first transport, as I said, I'm, I'm here to help with campaigning. Um, and all these organisations as well, these national and London transport organisations, joined us in a joint response to last year's um, consultation, and, and we're all firmly against it as well, and we'll be, we'll be helping to campaign against it. So I think, you know, with the, with the arguments we've got, with the laws that there are, with the uh, resources we can get together, I mean, we're not going to be given £50,000 by Boris. But we can, we can raise money through um, grant organisations, through fundraising, and I think we can get a comparable set of experts together to challenge this and, and to beat it together. Um, oh, this, is, this is new roads equal new traffic. You just always remember that. It doesn't equal congestion and anything, it just equals new traffic. And this is me and I'm crashing the launch of the bridge to get um, with a giant banner. So we can help with that as well. <laughs> And I'm at, at Rose Snowa, I've been tweeting from the panel this evening. Um, there's links to documents there that I recommended. The um, joint objection letter is actually in the back of as a handout. <coughs> um, and all of this stuff is also available on the website. So I hope um, you'll be interested to check it out, uh, that you'll follow the campaign, that you'll make sure that you join in with no events. And if we all work together, we can, I think, defeat this one. It's, it's one of the worst ideas I've ever seen. Right, thank you very much.